Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the beauty of mathematics, part nine. We do this series on the first of every month. So if you're new, I think you're in for a treat. If this isn't your first rodeo with this type of, of a video, then hopefully you enjoy the update. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're close to 150,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate it if you subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we follow this logarithmic regression chart. It's not just Bitcoin. I know it says it in the title, but it's actually the market capitalization of the entire cryptocurrency asset class. Over here, it was just Bitcoin because that was the only cryptocurrency around. But as we continue on throughout the cycles, we know that this curve is representative of more than just the market capitalization of Bitcoin. So where, where are we today? Well, on March 1st, 2021, our current market capitalization of the entire cryptocurrency asset class is now a modest 1.427 trillion. The trend line, our fair value fit, has us theoretically at a humble 560 billion. Now that would theoretically put us at an overvaluation of 155%. However, we also do know that we can stay overvalued for a very long time just like we can stay undervalued for a very long time. We can go years of being overvalued and at much higher percentages that are, than our current overvaluation. And we can also spend years at undervaluation territory. And we, we, had, we did spend a significant amount of time so far this market cycle in the undervaluation territory. Now the red line just shows the quote unquote fair value fit. It's fit to all data, not just non-bubble data like some of the videos, it's fit to all data. The dash green line represents more or less our lower bound. So if you ever see the total cryptocurrency market capitalization hugging the lower green dash line, historically it is among the best opportunities you will have to invest within the cryptocurrency asset class. The upper green line is to just sort of, gu sort of guide us in terms of how close we could be getting to a theoretical market cycle peak. However, we might not necessarily make it to the green line this cycle. If you take a look at the first peak, we went well above the green line. The second one, we were right, up, right above it. The third one, we touched the green line. The fourth one will probably come a little bit lower than the green line if I had to, to guess based on simply dubiously extrapolating these three data points. Now, if we continue on, one of the things we note is that each cycle, we tend to spend a decent amount of time in this undervaluation territory. And when you look at each cycle, we tend to have a major peak around the upper green line. Now, we don't know exactly when we will hit this final blow off top of this market cycle. What I would say though, is I do not think we are anywhere close to the, to the market cycle peak, okay? There's a key distinction there between a theoretical local top and a market cycle peak. We could be at a, we could be at a local top the local top could come in a few months. We don't exactly know, but because of where we are in reference to our fair value fit, I do not yet think we are at a market cycle peak where this looks more like a, a bunny hill so far. We're, we're not that far extended. Uh, we're more extended than we were in say 2019, but it still hasn't reached that, you know, that final blow off top area. And we might not reach it as soon as some may think. Now, if we continue going up at this rate, we would probably reach it halfway through the year, okay? So, you know, I know we have all of our theories about whether it's lengthening cycles, whether it's four-year cycles, whatever. If we continue moving up at the rate we're moving, we would probably hit this region halfway through, halfway through 2021. Uh, however, if we calm down for a few months or just trend sideways, we know, we know that this can be pushed down the road. It could be later in 2021, 2022. And we, we just sort of show where we might go based on how long it takes us to get there. The longer it takes us to build up to whatever the final blow off top is, I think the higher we will ultimately trend. You can see a lot of these areas though are pretty much uh, clustering around a $10 trillion market capitalization. So I do think that we will go to approximately $10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion. Now from here, we can take the 
market cap and divide it by the fair value fit. You guys know I like to do this to get a mathematical representation of the extension from the market cap or the extension of the market cap to the fair value. And we have a pretty well-defined macro downtrend with three blow off peaks. We have an undervaluation phase. Note that it, everything is shifted. 100% does not mean 100% overvalued. 100% is actually corresponding to the fair value. So 200% would be a, a, an overvaluation of basically 2x, okay? So if you ever see us back in this green band, which we were, we, we, which we were at you know, less than a year ago, recognize how great of an opportunity it is. It doesn't always come around. You can see that when we go back into it, we might spend a couple years there, uh, but we do not tend to stick around there for say more than that. Now we are trending back up as we speak, at least looking on say like a weekly or monthly time frame. Now from here, we don't exactly know when we'll get to the top of this macro downtrend line. We should say that it is a somewhat dubious trend because it's only three data points. There's no guarantee that we have a fourth data point on this trend line. However, you have to ask yourself if we make it to the trend line and your portfolio is up, up more than you could have ever possibly imagined, you might consider it a little more risky or significantly more risky than even the current levels, which are a lot more risky than say just a year ago. So if you do get if we do get up to this point, again, it's not to say that we can't go above it, it's just to say, well, is it worth the risk? And you have to figure out if it's worth the risk for you or not. So we could go up there sooner or we could go up there later. Obviously we discussed the various theories on the channel, but I'm just showing you we have to be somewhat flexible, of course. We can present the theories, but we'll see how long it takes us to get to this line. And because we're nowhere close to it, we can't just say it's, oh, we're, we're close enough to some level of uncertainty. Because we're nowhere close to it, this is another reason why I do not think we are yet at a market cycle peak. However, we could have, you know, we could have local tops that then retrace 40 or 50% for all we know on the way to a theoretical future market cycle peak. Now, we also have to consider that so far we are emulating the second cycle where we had a major move up like this, okay? We're, we're looking a lot like that cycle uh, so far. We'll see if it emulates it in terms of coming back down or how far it can go up before coming back down and then maybe we have a double peak cycle. You could argue it's a triple peak cycle if we also include the one from 2019 as well. To some degree, a lot of the similarities between this cycle and this one derive from this pattern of coming coming down into the undervaluation and then back above and then down even further and then back above just barely and then down again and then blast off. So down, back above, down even further, just barely peeking our head above it and then back down and then blast off. So that's the similarities between this cycle and two cycles ago. There's been more intra-cycle volatility so far this cycle, not necessarily macro volatility in terms of return on investment from market cycle bottom, but there has been more intra cycle volatility because you can see we had this 2019 peak and then back down. This one had a lot cleaner market structure than, than our current cycle. And this one emulates this one. The fourth cycle so far is more so emulating the second one rather than the third one. Now we could do something like that where we have a, a a peak, we come back, we come back down for a while and then go back up for another peak. We could just go straight to the top. We have to always be prepared for this. If the train just keeps going, if the momentum just keeps building, of course, we want to be prepared for a scenario like that. We also might want to be prepared for a scenario like this, where we sort of have a, a, a peak. Maybe later on we have a second peak and then later on we have a third peak. This would probably be the most stressful uh, scenario because you, you keep thinking, oh, that's, that's the end. And then a few months later, it trends higher than it was. So keep that in mind. So maybe it's a triple peak. You could even argue that it's a quadruple peak if you want to include the one from 2019, if something like this were to play out. And we sort of get this methodical move up uh, over the course of several years. Obviously, there's a lot of different theories. We want to remain somewhat flexible as we continue to navigate the market cycle. So this would show a lot of the different possibilities in terms of getting to an overvaluation that would be representative of a market cycle top. This again shows why I do not think we are anywhere close to a market cycle top for this market cycle. Doesn't mean it's not a local top because we know we can have substantial corrections even within a market cycle. Last cycle we had many 30 and 40% corrections. The cycle before that we had a very significant correction where it, you know, it corrected um, like 70, 80% or something before trending back up. 
So we know that whatever comes our way, navigating the cycle is not just going to be a cakewalk. There's going to be times where you probably feel like the cycle is over. However, I do think that time is on our side. Whether you think it's a short cycle and will continue going up for a couple more months before the end, whether you think it's a four year cycle and you think maybe it's gonna go until December, whether you think it's a lengthening cycle, which is what I tend to believe, uh, and you think it can extend past 2021, especially with institutions pouring in, I don't just think that narrative is gonna stop in 2021. We're all just gonna take a break from crypto in 2022 and 2023, and then come back late 2023 to do it all over again, or, or 2024, I should say, to do it all over again. I don't necessarily think it's gonna play out like that, but we'll take it one step at a time. Now, we have to consider a lot of these different possibilities. It's always possible we sort of cool off for a while, come back down to our fair value, and then trend up later. Note that it doesn't necessarily mean um, uh, that we have to have like an 80% drop or something, but even if we were just trend sideways for a while, eventually we would get back to the fair value because the fair value is a monotonically increasing function since it is a lot, it's a lot, it's a logarithmic regression function that we're, we're plotting. So with that in mind, we've looked at the data. The data suggests that we still have a ways to go in the market cycle, albeit we could have local, we could have local tops along the way, or you know, these mania phases followed by cool off phases, followed by more mania phases. Time is on our side. Do not let emotions rule the way you navigate these markets. Stick to the data, subscribe to the channel, definitely subscribe. We're almost at 150,000 subscribers. Definitely subscribe if you wanna see these future updates every single month on the first of the month we post this video. Make sure you subscribe. And as we all know, and how we like to end these videos, I've said before, I think the market, the market capitalization of the cryptocurrency asset class will probably reach approximately $10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion dollars. But as we drift away, as we drift to sleep at night, we can't help but wonder what's a few trillion among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.